Prince of Leaf since he brand said it. You can pull TAC from all my hair that's shredded. I fly in without being safety netted. Hydro keep me extremely wetted. I got weed that's super green. It look like a grasshopper. That's in the grass. Thanks for rolling up and Tubla Marley. It's certified pothead. Smoking on one up. No. Mid afternoon splits. You know, get it, get it, get it, litty, my bro. You about to jump back into these uh cannabis conspiracy theories. Today's theory involves the Sphinx. So, all right, folks, let's get, let's get, let's get, let's try to get our minds running, minds spinning like a spinning like a dreidel, bro. Try to jump right into this head first. Have you ever wondered if the Sphinx wasn't just some colossal desert cat flaw in a pharaoh's bling? What if it was actually a monument dedicated to a plant? Not just any plant, though. Dank plant. Cannabis. Sacred herb. The one that make you question your existence and laugh at your own socks. Picture this, right? Ancient cannabis growers building a sphinx not to honor a king, but to worship the goddess of the plant. Imagine these ancient herbalists hanging out with their bongs and rolling papers plotting on their next great stone sculpture project and what if that project was the sphinx what if the sphinx is a cosmic amplifier we're going to dive into all these points of the theory in a second i know it sounds it sounds crazy like a like a stoner's fever dream but who says history can't have a sense of humor or have some type of like hidden things behind it Maybe the Sphinx was really just the ancient world's version of a weed festival. What if going to the Sphinx to blaze was the same thing as the Burning Man? I know we just sitting here talking about what ifs, what ifs, but this is what ifs on something, something cosmic level, bruh. Speaking of, speaking of cosmic level riddles, here's a riddle for you. I fly without wings. I cry without eyes. Wherever I go, darkness flies. What am I? Well, you ponder on that. Let's get back to our uh, favorite stone feline, the Sphinx. Could the Sphinx's alignment with the stars, right, be more than just a uh, celestial coincidence? Maybe it was designed to reflect the growth cycles of cannabis. I mean, you know, the farmer's almanac always, you know what I mean, predicted when, when, when to grow your crops and that type of thing. What if the Sphinx alignment with the stars was showing you when to plant, when to harvest? Like when the, the star got right up top of the joint, you plant. When it's over to the left, you harvest. Like, you know what I'm saying? What, what, what if those is the reason why the Sphinx is located where it is? Can you imagine ancient stoners using star charts, astrology, to figure out when to harvest they weed and stuff. Imagine smoking near the Sphinx. What if it might actually activate something? Maybe like maybe the ancient Egyptians set up a hidden interstellar Wi-Fi network that when you smoke near the Sphinx, you get in tune to like cosmic vibes or something. Smoke weed near the Sphinx and then boom, you connect it to all the knowledge of the universe. Maybe it's just wishful thinking. What am I talking about? I'm just sitting here smoking, bro. Maybe it is just a cat with a human face maybe that is that is all the sphinx is that might be just all the sphinx is but what if it is something different something more bro here's another riddle to um, kick around in your head too i'm not alive but i grow i don't have lungs but i need air i don't have a mouth but water kills me what am i get back into the sphinx bro let's talk carvings and shit could the ancient builders have hidden secret symbols in the Sphinx? What if they left behind the ultimate grower guide, bruh? Just waiting for some modern day stoner to decode it. Imagine if the carving were actually like the universe's best kept recipe for the perfect bud passed down through the ages. What if we crack the code and then it's like the ultimate cannabis growing manual? I know that's kind of crazy, bruh. It is kind of crazy, but again, bruh. A lot of theories sound crazy until they don't. I don't. Has anybody ever been inside the Sphinx? Does the Sphinx have an inside? Are there inside carvings? Have they decoded those? It sounds like a, you know what I mean, sci fi weed movie. Somebody going to the Sphinx, smoking near it, doors opening up, and then they're into this room with some of the best dank in the world. Sounds like a sounds like a sci-fi movie. That sounds like a dope sci-fi movie, though. Speaking of sci-fi, here's another room. I have a heart that doesn't beat, a home that never sleeps. I can be both alive and dead. What am I? Could the ancient Egyptians have worshipped a 
goddess of the plant who guided their cannabis crop. Maybe she's still out there hiding in plain sight like a cosmic hippie waiting for us to discover her ancient wisdom. Maybe they've been letting loose secrets. It's a little scavenger hunt. We just now starting to get into uh the answers. It's a lot to wrap your head around. There's no solid evidence, but it is fun to imagine that ancient cannabis users will worship the plant the same way Egyptians worship the sun. And then they would carve a monument to it. For me, that's not far-fetched. But again, I'm just a stoner sitting here smoking, bro. What's the brass tax? Is the Sphinx more than just a stone cat? Is it a monument to a plant that connected the ancestors to the cosmos? Or is it just a big ass mystery waiting for someone else with a good sense of humor to open up and see? I don't know, but here's the answer to the riddles. A cloud, fire, an artichoke, and a sponge. I'll see y'all next time.